Hey, uh, my name is Corey Lee, and today we are on the Corey Lee Leadership and Fitness Podcast. And today, we've got one of my good friends, um, and actually somebody I've learned a lot from. His name is Drew Jackson. And Drew, he is with the John Maxwell team as well. He's a speaker, coach, and trainer. And something about Drew, he has got over 300 hours of stage time, which is pretty awesome. And he does some keynote speaking, conferences, small group trainings. And Drew, um, he's, a, he's a veteran leader of teams for the past 15 years. Uh, he's been a practitioner, a practitioner of leadership. <laughs> so, uh, Drew, welcome uh, today. And uh, Thank I hope you. you today. Yeah, thank you, Corey Lee, for having me in here. And, uh, and it's just my pleasure to be on your podcast today. Awesome, man. Well, Drew, uh, before we kind of get, get started, um, tell people where, a little bit about you, like uh, where are you from and family life and background and all. Yeah, well, I, I'm from Visalia, California, Central Valley of California. That's where I'm from. If we go way back. Um, and I've kind of gone back and forth between California and Texas. And so right now I'm in Fort Worth, Texas and having a great time um, with my family, married for 15 years now and got five kids. So ranging from 13 to eight months. So, so it's loud in our house. It's messy. It's busy. We don't even, we're, you know, it just, it's like as soon as you clean it, it's messy again. So we just embrace it as the stage of life that we're in, you know. <laughs> Maybe you can help me with that because I feel like I'm always, we've got three and I feel like I'm always picking up something. So, oh, yeah. Good stuff. Well, Absolutely. Uh, to me, what's impressive is, of course, I'm a speaker, coach, and trainer as well, but uh, to have over 300 hours of, of stage time, that's pretty awesome. And, you know, I talk to people a lot and some of the biggest, one of the biggest fears I see is like, public speaking or speaking in front of people. Um, I was talking to my brother the other day and he said that is his biggest fear. And, you know, I can kind of understand, I get a little bit nervous myself, but um, with, with that much experience, what's, what's something that, that you could share with somebody that may be nervous about speaking in front of people? What, what kind of advice could you give them? Yeah, uh, great question. Um, you know, I think I've, I've read that it's uh, public speaking is up there with like fear of sharks being eaten by a shark or something. So, you know, it's up there, man. So your brother-in-law is not, uh, not rare in that. Um, but I was thinking about this and I thought, uh, you know, when, when I think about public speaking is I, I don't try to go in there and be the expert um, or come across as the expert. So I, I don't put that pressure on myself to be perfect, to be the expert. My goal when I go out there is to help people. So I truly believe that, that leadership development, every organization needs it. Communications, everybody needs it. And those are the things I talk about. So it's, it's, it's real to me. Um, and if I go out there saying, you know, I'm, I'm gonna try and help these people, then uh, it changes your whole perspective from being a performer to being an influencer. And so, um, you know, many times I have a mentor that says, uh, he, he doesn't call it, he's very disciplined. He doesn't call it the stage. Um, he calls it the platform because he said a stage is where you perform, but a platform is where you influence. And, um, and that's always stuck with me. So, so I try to recognize that when I go out there, I have a platform where I can influence people encourage people, but my, my real goal is to help them. So when I keep that in my mind, it takes a lot of that pressure off of, off of me. That's, you know, that, that's really great advice because it's really shifting your focus from me centered, what other people are going to think about me or, or, yeah. or whatever about myself is shifting it to these people. I can, I can influence them and make a positive impact on them instead of being focused on yourself. And that's great. That's good. Advice. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. So Drew, uh, you, you've worked on the 15 laws of growth, right? Mm -hmm. got, yeah. Uh, helped a lot of people with that, uh, individuals and businesses. Um, can you tell me, uh, why, why is that something you're so passionate about is the 15 laws of growth and reach, helping people reach their potential with that? Yeah, <clears throat> I, I just, I, I love the concept or the idea of reaching my full potential. And, and I think so many of us, we don't even engage in that process. I know there's been times in my life where I haven't even tried to reach my potential. I've just 
been trying to survive, you know? And, um, but the, the thought process of, um, what could I be? How far could I go? Um, it, it intrigues me and it inspires me. And I want to get that message out to as many people as possible and, and inspire them to reach their full potential. Um, uh, I've heard, I've heard it said that, that our potential is what, uh, is God's gift to us. And what we do with it is our gift to him. And so just the idea of like, I don't, I don't want to leave anything on the table. You've heard, you've heard all of the, the uh, illustrations, you know, the, all the greatest ideas in the world are in cemeteries, you know, and, and, and they're, they're in the souls and uh, these people, you know, that, that passed and they're buried with them. Instead, I want to release that. So the 15 invaluable laws of growth, how that plays in is it's really just activating people. So my personal mission statement for my life is that uh, my dream is to help you live yours. And so I really do want to help activate people and take a step in living their dream and help them. I can't make them live their dream. I can't make them, they, they have to take action for themselves. But where you and I come in, in similar roles in that is we can help equip them. We can help give them tools. And uh, just from knowing you, Corey, you're a great encourager. I, I mean, it's why the, the gyms work for you and all that kind of stuff. It's just because people come in that place where they couldn't do it on their own, but they, but they come, they know if I come alongside Corey, he's going to encourage me. He's going to help me go further than I could go on my own. And, and that's what I love about the 15 invaluable laws of growth is that it's about helping people push past some of those barriers or perceived barriers that have been placed on them so that they can reach their full potential. Yeah, I'm with you, man. It's, it's actually one of my favorite books. I've, I've dug through it multiple times here recently and 100% agree with you. So obviously there's 15 laws in there and, and John wrote, wrote that book. Um, so of those 15, what, what's for you, what's your favorite or most impactful or one that, that you've seen be most impactful for someone else? Um, which is your favorite law? And, and if you share a little bit about that law, I guess. Um, yeah. Yeah. Th thank you. Thank you for asking that question. You know, um, there's no doubt in my mind, my favorite law is the first law, the law of intentionality. And I think it's great that that is the first law because that if you're not intentional about completing the book, then, you know, you aren't going to get the other 14 laws. So you kind of got to have that one first and set aside time. Um, you know, people, people were intentional about getting on this podcast today, clicking on this, um, uh, whether they're watching it, you know, in 2017 or 2025, they had to be in today to sit down, find the, the web address, sit on here, be intentional about doing that. So I'm very big on that. And, um, and, and, so that, that's definitely my favorite law. Would it be okay if I shared just a little snippet of kind of like my favorite points? Is that, is that cool real quick? Yeah, I would love for you to do that because the goal of this podcast and, and having you, you're, you're an expert in your field and um, being able to, to impact people who are listening to this and add value to them, man, that's, that, that would be great. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, um, the, the, one of the reasons why I like this chapter and this law is that John lines out eight growth gap traps. And those are basically, it's a fancy term for excuses that we make. We all make excuses for why we aren't growing or why we aren't meeting our goals or why, you know, the scale doesn't say what we want it to say at the end of the year, or we're not, you know, hitting our weightlifting, whatever the case is, wherever you're at in life, whatever you're trying to do, your sales goals, we all make excuses for why we're not where we want to be. And so he has a, I'm going to run through these real quick. Um, and, and just give a little commentary on it. But the first one is the assumption gap. So I assume that I will automatically grow. And, uh, this is a bad one. When, when we make an assumption that just because we're alive and we're on this earth and there's breath in our lungs, that we're actually moving forward and living that, that that's horrible. We, we do not automatically grow. And uh, the great philosopher Bruce Springsteen <laughs> once said, he said, a, a time comes when you need to stop waiting for the man you want to become and start being the man you want to be. And I think that's so good is that, that don't wait till uh, the, the, the Monday. Don't wait till the beginning of the year. Don't wait till the first of the month. Start today and, uh, and, and make the decision to start growing. I did this with a book recently that has an activity in it where 
you actually read the same chapter for 30 days straight. And I thought, well, I'm about four days away from the first of the month. I can wait. That was my first thought is I can wait till the first of the month. But then this, this idea, and, and I'm going to talk about the, the, the timing gap in a moment, came to mind that, hey, don't assume that four or five days from now, you'll each, you actually remember this book exists, right? You got to take action right now. Um, number two, the knowledge gap says, I don't know how to grow. And so many of us get caught up in the, I don't know how to, I don't know how to grow. Well, uh, you didn't know how to walk when you started walking. Um, you don't know how to, uh, you, I would submit to you that you really don't know how to do anything until you've done it. Um, I, I didn't know how to run a half marathon until I ran a half marathon. And now, now I, you know, I, I could put one foot in front of the other. I could speculate. I could kind of imagine in my mind cause I had run 10 miles, but I hadn't run 13. And so I could imagine my mind how to do it, but I never had to do it before. So I really didn't know how to do it. I didn't know how mile 11, mile 12, mile 13 were actually going to feel. So you really don't know how to do anything until you do it. So you just got to jump out, um, like Nike says, and, and just do it. Um, the third gap trap is the timing gap, which, uh, which there's uh, a law by Jim Rohn that's, that he calls the law of diminishing in 10. And it says the longer you wait to do something you should do now, the greater the odds that you will never actually do it. And this is the, the old saying, you know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, right? <laughs> like everything, in, we all have good intentions, right? We have good intentions to, um, to be a good husband, be a good father, um, be healthy. But until we start doing it, which goes back to why I just began that book and started doing it right away, because if you're going to do it, you got to do it now. You got to start now. Um, all right, I better, I better run through these fast. Okay, number four, the mistake gap. Um, we get caught up in thinking, I don't want to make a mistake. Um, and, and so we don't even start. The mistake gap says, I'm afraid um, of growing. Um, but a mistake is proof. Zig Ziglar says a mistake is proof that you're trying something new. So you're going to fall just like you did when you first began walking. You're going to fall. Um, it's just part of the journey. Remember that and move forward knowing that, uh, that sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. Right, Corey? <laughs> oh, definitely, man. Yeah. 100%. Um, yeah, right. So, uh, uh, number five, the perfection gap. Um, I have to find the best way before I can start growing. Um, and we can get caught up in the uh, paralysis of analysis, um, and, and just get stuck and, and not make a move. Um, I I've put out, we're in a similar, we're in the same business, really coaching, speaking, training with a different uh, kind of niche that we each have. But the, the reality is the foundation of our business is to go out there and start small group trainings. I think I've started and put out there and marketed more small group trainings than I've actually led, <laughs> you know, because you, you put them out there and then you realize, oh, wait, you know what? Starting something the week before Christmas maybe isn't the best idea, you know, <laughs> or, or, you know, kicking this off when I already have an existing free campaign, maybe that's not the best. And you learn along the way. So if you're waiting um, for it to be perfect, the, the perfect conditions will never be there. You'll never have all the answers. You just got to step out and do it. Um, number six, the inspiration gap. And I'm just going to quote John on this one real quick. He says this, he says, losers wait to feel like doing it before they start, but winners start and feel good later. And so I just want to ask the listeners, you know, are you a winner or a loser? And, um, and that's only a question that you can answer for yourself. That's tough terms, but, but that's just the reality of, of life. Number seven, the comparison gap. We compare ourselves to others. Um, I like to say others are better than you and others are not. Uh, run your race and you'll do a lot. So a little rhyme for you today. All you can do is run your race. And, um, you know, Corey, I, I would imagine that, that Corey, you could run faster than me. But all I can do is, is run my race, you know, and I, I, I can run my race and, and get it done and, um, and know that I have beat my time. My wife and I, um, just this will prove that you can run faster than me, but we, we just recently completed um, 10 miles in under two hours. Now that some people are gonna be like, good night, that's slow. But hey, for us, we, we were way under, we're about 15 minutes under two hours. But the last time we ran 10 miles, we we're about four or five minutes over two hours. So for us, we had a 20 minute swing on our time. 
that was good for us. I can't compare myself to Corey in his times or other people. I can only compare myself to myself. And then number eight, finally, the expectation gap. And Jim Rohn says, uh, or the expectation gap says this, I thought it would be easier than this. I thought it would be easier than this. And, and man, that hits home, right, Corey? <laughs> 100%. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we, we always think it's going to be easier than it is. And Jim Rohn said, uh, you cannot change your destination overnight, but you can change your direction overnight. And, and you can make the choice to say, hey, I'm not going to continue down this path. I know what this gets me. Um, I'm going to change course. And what it, it, whether it takes me a year, two years, or the rest of my life to get to where I'm going, um, I, I'm going to do the right things every day and let the outcomes be the outcomes and, and then you know, modify based on that. So those are the, just, that's just a small portion of one chapter. And that's, I, I, I imagine your listeners can see why, you know, it's just such a wonderful, wonderful training that, that Corey and I both, we both have access to this and both can teach this and lead small groups and organizations with this, uh, this content. So it's great stuff. That's why I love it, Corey. <laughs> You know, I, that was awesome. I think that that content is great. I mean, you, you just went through eight of them there and, and listening to you, how many of those have I fallen into that have prevented me from taking action on something that, that I could have? Or how many, how many other things could I have achieved or helped other people in other areas if I didn't allow myself to fall into those? And um, I'm with you. Those are, those are some things that I'm, I'm passionate about as well. And I can tell that you are. And you just shared just a little bit, and I think you did a great job of, of sharing your stories, and that, that brings it to life um, in that. So that was just a small snippet of what you do. If, if somebody wants to, um, I guess, find out more about, about your trainings and what you can offer, I guess, how do they learn more about that, and how could they get in touch with you? Yeah, uh, well, you can always go to my website at uh, drewtjackson.com, and uh, I have a blog on there. I've got video content on there that you can check out. Um, if you want the, the video content, just fresh every day, I do a, a, a quick video blog um, on my YouTube channel, which is uh, drewtjackson.com. Just keep it simple. Um, you can find my channel and uh, tune in there. I do a live video every day and then um, podcast and video cast weekly. So those, those are just a couple ways that you can kind of, um, uh, Find, find me and, and um, I shared with you the, uh, the training. I just completed 15 weeks um, of doing the 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth and I have the video recording. So it's not interactive, it's, it's pre-recorded video um, that you can have, but you can listen to it. The great thing is you can, you can download it on your phone, listen to it on your way to work over and over and over again. Those will be downloadable. Um, I've got all 15 laws of me teaching it for uh, $39.99. It'll be on my website. I just finished the last recording last night, so it'll be packaged on my website on the 8th of this month, December 8th, uh, 2017. So that's, that's one way that people can get that content from me. And that's, that's good. You know, I've, I've listened to uh, and watched some of your videos, actually, and I think you've got some great content. Uh, I love how you, you simplify it for simple minds like myself. So <laughs> great job uh, of that. And so if, if you want to learn, man, uh, definitely go check out some of Drew's videos. I, I think that's great. You know, you know, Drew, I've, I've enjoyed kind of getting to, to know you over the past several weeks. And, yep. of, and <clears throat> you know, I think you have a, um, a unique background for leadership, right? Uh, yeah. You kind of kind of share, I know, but I would like for you to share with some of the listeners, what, what makes you unique in your background for leadership development when you're working with other people? Um, what, what makes you unique? Yeah. Um, well, my mom always told me I was special. So, uh, <laughs> that's, the, that's the first thing. No, I'm just messing with you. Um, yeah, for, for me, my perspective is I come from a nonprofit background. So working with churches for the last 15 years in leadership in churches and, and, um, you know, the, the, the difference with working with a nonprofit organization is that, um, they don't have to be there, right? All your volunteers, they're, they're doing it in their spare time. Um, they're giving up time. They could be hanging out with their family or watching their favorite television show. And so you've got to be able to, to capture people with a strong vision and, um, and then give them incentives 
to continue to show up. And, and for me, the incentive was I always try to pour into my people and, and um, develop them, raise them up to their full potential. And that idea of my dream is to help you live yours has always been a part of who I am, um, even in that nonprofit sector. sector. So I've had, uh, once again, 15 years of being able to lead groups of volunteers um, into doing great things, whether it's starting organizations from scratch out of my garage <laughs> or um, leading uh, multiple thousands of people, you know, in, in existing organizations and, and um, having the opportunity to do that. So, so that's kind of uniquely where I'm coming from in, in that standpoint. Yeah, that, that's great. You know, I think I heard, um, it may have been John, uh, but I, I've heard in the past that if you want a true test of your leadership and what you can do, go try to lead a nonprofit, right? Because <laughs> like you said, they're volunteers. They don't have yeah. to be there. And as a leader, you've got to have a team of people going in one direction, right? You can't have yeah. one direction and the other. And, and to lead a nonprofit, uh, you got to have everybody going in the right direction. Everybody that doesn't have to be there. right? Yeah. So, yeah, man, that, that's great. So, Drew, man, I think you've shared some great, great content. I've learned a lot from listening to you today, but I want to go through Thank a, you. a few questions I got for you, all right? All now, right, all right. Fired, okay. Uh, okay. Quick, the first thing that comes to your mind when I ask you these, um, I, want, I want you to just spit it out to us. And uh, I've got five questions, and again, rapid fire, okay? Okay. All right. So, Drew, what is the best piece of advice that you've ever been given? Um, the, the best piece of advice would be, um, John said, uh, I want the people that are, are closest to me to think the highest of me. And that's always just stuck with me and resonated with me. Oh, that's good. Uh, yeah, man. I like that. That <laughs> is mean, good. Huh? They, they see you every day. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My wife and kids, you know, if I, I, I might be a hero outside of my house, but then when I come home, you know. The, I got to change diapers and do everything else like everybody else. So, you know, they better, they better love me. That's right. You can't fake it and make it there, right? <laughs> Absolutely. All right, what's your favorite book? Um, uh, the Proverbs of, of King Solomon. Definitely read it probably more than any other book. And uh, I keep going back to it because I keep getting stuff. I think John says that, gosh, I don't want to be like a, you know, John Maxwell, but I listen to him a lot, but he has said, if you want, um, one good business idea a month, read through, uh, the Proverbs every day for one good business idea a month. There you go for all the business owner listeners out there. That's good right there. All right. What about favorite movie? <clears throat> Jason Bourne, man, Jason Bourne, any of them, any of the, the, I guess there's five of them. I will only count four with the ones with Matt Damon, but, uh, yeah, Jason Bourne for sure. <laughs> so you like those action tag. I got oh you. yeah. All right, Drew. If, if I grab your iPhone or your, your <clears throat> music list right there, and I, if I open it up to your music, yeah, what would I listen to? What would be the first thing, first thing that would pop up? Man, uh, hopefully my mom's not, not on here uh, listening to this. No. <laughs> you know what? Back in Black, man, gets me pumped up. ACDC, you know, I, I bet you have that playing in the gym sometimes. That just gets me pumped up. I don't know the message of the song, so don't judge me, okay? But, uh, but it gets me fired up. There you go. Classic rock, classic rock across the board just gets me fired up. There you go. So, so that's the music you listen to when you need some motivation <laughs> yeah. and working out, right? When I'm getting ready or getting ready to make a sales call, right? <laughs> <laughs> just the beats. I got you. Right. All right. Last one. If you had a superpower now, I know you got superpowers because you drew Jackson, but hey. if you had other superpowers, what would it be? Um, flying for sure, man. Flying. Absolutely. Okay. Oh yeah. Very nice. Well, Drew, man, I appreciate you taking the time today to be on, uh, the podcast with Corey Lee leadership and fitness podcast. One more time. Uh, I, again, you share some great content. So if somebody wants to get in touch with you one more time, share with them how they can, um, get some of your content. Yeah. Thank you so much. You can go to drew T Jackson.com and uh, find out all my, all my stuff there, and uh, I'd love to connect with you. Awesome. Drew, man, I, again, appreciate your time, man, and I, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much, Corey. Thanks, man.